Hi, my name is Baba Patel, and in this video, I'll be talking about our work on visual localization with Google Earth Images for robust global pose estimation of UAVs. So we estimate the global pose of a multi-rotor UAV using only a gimbal camera, an IMU, and pre-rendered images from Google Earth. And so here are a few examples of these pre-rendered images taken from the 3D view of Google Earth at various locations across Utias. Now, the major challenge in performing visual localization with these pre-existing maps is that there's a large appearance change between the true world at the time of flight and the 3D reconstruction. So here we have real images on the left and images captured from Google Earth on the right at two different locations. And we can see a change in color and brightness and structural changes to the environment, such as the building in the top pair. And sometimes we also see areas of poor reconstruction, such as the trees in the bottom pair. All of these appearance changes cause difficulties for visual localization. And so to handle this, instead of using local image features or photometric error, we use a dense mutual information-based technique to add some robustness to these appearance changes. Now, before I talk about our method in detail, I'd like to briefly mention other techniques that have used georeferenced imagery or mutual information-based image registration. So some early work used building outlines to align images, but this required higher altitude flights so that the outlines of multiple buildings could be visible. Local features have also been used, but result in a large number of outliers due to the appearance change. Unsurprisingly, deep learning techniques have also been used, but are often only used for place recognition and not true metric localization. Now in this work, we adopt the use of the normalized information distance, which was introduced with FARLAP. And in contrast to Yol's work, which uses a 2D photo mosaic of satellite images, we use pre-rendered images from Google Earth to enable accurate localizations at lower altitude flights. So here is an overview of our estimator. We have three major blocks, which are shown in green. So gimbaled visual geometry, image registration, and pose filtering. Now, before we perform any estimation, we first need to generate the database of Google Earth images. And before we do that, we first need to plan our flight path. So the first path we flew is this 303 meter rectangular path flown during an overcast day in fall. And we also flew this more complicated 1.1 kilometer path six times throughout the day during a sunny summer day from sunrise to sunset. Now this path contains areas where we have man-made structure and also areas where we only have vegetation in order to test our algorithm in different environments. And so after planning the desired UAV flight path, we go onto the 3D view of Google Earth and render images. So here I'm showing an example for the short rectangular path. And so you can see that the images are generated not only at a limited number of poses along the path, but also above and below and beside the path. Once we have the database of Google Earth images in our flight area, we can use them to estimate the global pose. So the first step in our estimator is to perform visual geometry on the real images. So here's an example of our sparse feature-based gimbaled visual geometry, where here I'm showing the grayscale images with the surf feature tracks. And on the bottom right, we have Arvis showing the vehicle and the keyframes. So the output of visual geometry is a relative six degree freedom pose between two keyframes. And this can be used to obtain both an initial guess for the image registration and also as a prior in our filter. So the next step is to perform image registration. For every keyframe, we register the real image with a selected Google Earth image. The goal is to determine the relative pose between the UAV camera and a virtual Google Earth camera that generated a selected Google Earth map image. Since we know the global pose of the Google Earth camera, we can then obtain the global pose of the UAV camera. Now this relative pose contains six degrees of freedom, but we can actually simplify the problem. Because we are using a gimbal, we're gonna keep the camera pointed in the nadir direction. The gimbal will then provide us with an estimate of the roll and pitch angles, and we only need to worry about estimating the 3D position and yaw with the image registration. So this allows us to use an SRT warping instead of a full homography in order to register the images. So to register the images, we minimize the normalized information distance over the four SRT warping parameters. The normalized information distance and the mutual information are calculated using the joint and individual image entropies, and the entropies are 
scalar values computed using the histogram of grayscale image intensities. So we can think of this problem as taking one image, overlaying it on the other, and finding a scaling, rotation, and translation that minimizes the normalized information distance. Now often this occurs when the images are perfectly aligned, but it's important to note that that's not always the case. So we reject alignments if the pose recovered from the optimal SRT parameters is too far away from the pose predicted by visual odometry. In order to find the optimal warping parameters, we use the BFGS algorithm, which is a quasi-Newton method. And we do it in two steps. So the first step applies a Gaussian blur on the images before optimizing. And the reason why we blur is so that we can smooth out the cost function to prevent the optimization from getting stuck in any shallow local minima. We then take the result of the blurred optimization and use that as an initial guess for a refined optimization that operates on the raw images. Now from those optimal warping parameters, we can recover the vehicle pose parameters. And then we can treat this as a global pose measurement in a filtering framework. So here are the filtering equations. And what we're essentially doing here is using the image registrations to apply corrections to visual odometry. Okay, so now we'll move on to some results. So here we show the results for the 1.1 kilometer path that I mentioned before, um, with the images captured at noon, where we had a 97% uh, image registration success rate. And so on the left, we'll show image registration results with an alpha blend of the real and Google Earth images. And on the right, we'll show the 2D position estimates at the top and the height above ground at the bottom. And so as you can see, the alignment is quite good. Uh, most of the structure is nearly perfectly aligned. Um, but in some situations, like right there, um, you probably saw that the image registration was quite off. Now, the good thing is that when the image, re image registration does jump like that, we can easily reject it. And you can see that even in these areas where we only have vegetation, it is performing quite well. And so overall, we see that the estimator performs quite well. Um, we had uh, less than a meter and a few degrees RMS position and orientation errors. We also flew this 1.1 kilometer path at different times throughout the day to test under different lighting conditions. So here's an example of the lighting changes that can occur. So this is sunrise where it's quite dark. This is morning where it's a little bit brighter and we have shadows from the sun in the east. This is noon where it's much brighter. Afternoon. Evening where the shadows have completely shifted to the other side. And sunset where it's a little bit dimmer again. The final results I'll show are the 2D position estimates for each flight on the 1.1 kilometer path at different times throughout the day. So the numbers here indicate the image registration success rate, and what I'll be showing here is the ground truth in red um, and the filtered results in black. So as you can see, the results on the evening data set were the worst due to the large shadows that were present during that time. So these shadows can trick the mutual information registration to align the uh, shadows with its caster. However, overall, the filtered estimate was still quite accurate for all data sets. And for the noon data set, um, it performed the best because the lighting conditions at that time most closely matched the appearance of Google Earth at this location. So in summary, we presented a method to estimate the global pose of a multi-voter UAV using a dense mutual information-based image registration technique to metrically localize real images with rendered images from Google Earth. And on a total of 7.1 kilometers of data, we achieved position and orientation RMS errors on the order of a few meters and degrees. And we demonstrated that our method is capable of accurately estimating the pose at altitudes as low as 36 meters above ground and finally, we showed robustness to daily lighting changes during a sunny summer day.